now to the man we've been promising you all morning. He is sitting right here, Robert Downey Jr. What? He's played some iconic people over the years, Charlie Chaplin, Sherlock Holmes, and that little tiny role y'all may remember, Iron Man. Well, Robert has taken on another famous character in his new movie, The Doctor Who Talks to Animals. We're talking about Doolittle, but maybe he shouldn't rely on them in the operating room. Take a look. Mm. Dada, mm. forceps, please. Here you go. That's a piece of celery. Forceps, dub dub. Oh, sorry. Here you go. Still celery. Forceps. Carrot, that is. Forceps. That's a different piece of celery. Got it. Forceps. No, still celery. Never mind. I'll get it myself. <laughs> Robert, hi. Hi. I love the the accent to start off with. Boy, oh boy. Well, how was that? It's a Welsh accent, right? Welsh accent. Yeah, even Welsh people try not to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the way, great weather, Al. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to do something a little different. I yeah. played Chaplin. I played Sherlock, so I wanted to up my game a bit. Yeah. Well, the premiere um, happened. Your kids went. It's pro- your wife said it was the first premiere that your kids were able to go to. First time PG movie. And so give me the verdict, because kids know when something's good. Yes. Uh, they Siskel and Eberted us, yeah. and we got, we got thumbs up, which was a glowing endorsement. But I think at that point, they were probably eating cotton candy or something. So, you know, who knows? And I think the cool thing about this is it's for kids. But we were hearing that at the end of the movie, it got really emotional. You, you had audiences kind of in the palm of your hand. Describe what people will see when they go. Um, it's got a lot of heart. Yeah. You know, and I hear people promote things like that. And they go, yeah, me too, bro. Yeah. yeah. But um, we, we really wanted it to, to be impactful and be about communication and empathy and all this stuff. Like the movies that I was seeing when I was a kid. We were talking about some of them a while ago. Yeah. The first Doolittle was, they, they said uh, one of your coworkers yeah. was watching at Radio City back yeah. in 68 when it came out. Wow. Did, were you a f- real familiar with Doolittle when you were a kid? Pretty familiar. Probably more so with, with Eddie Murphy's version, yeah. just because that was a little more of my time. But, you know. You know a thing or two about animals because where you live, right. you've got a whole bunch. Can you just, could you list the animals that are in your area around your home? Yes. We have the four alpacas are uh, Dandy, Miss Brain, Madre, and Fuzzy. We have two. Two uh, cows right there, Strawberry <laughs> and uh, her brother Oreo. That is our new rescue goat. Uh, his name is Flash. Yeah. Uh, the chickens, that one's name is Bert. You name all your chickens? No. <laughs> uh, that is Cutie Boots. She's another rescue. We yeah. love her a bunch. She's not crazy about Flash because there's a little bit of a status game going on right now. So wait, so tell, walk me through how you care for these animals. Like you get out there and you do your thing. You feed them. You care for them. I, I do it. As, as I'm told by uh, the misses and and the, the the folks who actually know how to take care of animals, uh, I just I, I talk about them on TV yeah. and then they say, "Hey, thanks for the shout out." <laughs> do, do you talk to them in real life? I mean, do, do they Don't have a little all. thing? Don't we all? Do you? A it's, little? it's a weird, uh, fantastic thing, and and I believe that certain animals they at least cue a response. Yeah. That it seems like you're getting something. Yeah. You're, by the way, your wife is the producer on this show. You guys have done nine movies, I think she said, together. This is Naughty Number Nine, yeah. Naughty Number Nine. What's it like working so closely with your, with your spouse? She's great. She would be a much better interview than me. I think you guys have a lot in common. She's just an uh, extremely gifted and assertive person who has worked her butt off to wind up where she is mm-hmm. and uh and you know and we complement each other like any good relationship yeah. like we were talking about you know well i did see an interview with you and your wife and i just loved how y'all leaned into each other and that spoke a lot to it why why is she the one well first of all she's tolerated me low these many years and uh and we want to get along. I think that's the key to a relationship. Mm-hmm. Do you actually want to get along with this person? Then, yeah. then act like that, you know? That's good advice. Okay, so a lot of folks were really uh, just heartbroken when Iron Man and Tony Stark went away. Right. Were you heartbroken when the end came? I, you know, now that I'm middle-aged, to be honest, you start looking at the back nine and you go, oh, this is part of the, the journey as you... As you is that things end and, you know, everyone's going somewhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, Is it a true end, though? Because everyone keeps cracking a little door open saying maybe. Right. And are you keeping it cracked Those open? Those might be the, what are they called, the stages of grief? I'm yeah. not sure. <laughs> uh, are we in bargaining now? Um, 
I am so pleased just that I, I wound up where I have. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very fortunate. So I, I'm not the kind of guy who, who I, I like. I want to try to keep it classy. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. All right. That's good. We'll see if I'm we'll classy see. or not. Yeah. <laughs> now, your life has had so many highs and lows. And I was just thinking about, like, how you feel about this phase in your life. Like, it looks like everything seems to be going right. You got yeah. these great kids, a beautiful wife. It's you wild. Know. Yeah, tell us, tell me about this this phase in your life. Well, I mean, it's hard to get here. Yeah, and I think we all do. And life is an obstacle course. And I think if if anything, it's that uh, nothing is ever all okay at the same time. So I think it's important when you have those moments when personally, professionally. Yeah. Uh, you know, the kids are healthy. You just want to plant a flag and say, this is one of those days where I have no complaints. I've caused no wreckage and <laughs> I owe no apologies. This is great. And, you know. Well, can I just give you a little shout out for Ellen yesterday? You did a great job. Oh, really? You hosted Ellen. You were terrific. You said you <laughs> binge watched the morning show. I'm starting to think that maybe there's a lane for you in the mornings with with all of us. Yeah, it's going to be a hostile takeover. I really want to test. I did not expect come on, that visual. Give this come a try. On. Come See on. If you could do it because we're just testing different mattresses for consumer reports. This is uh -oh. Elliot. You know Al. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That's called a long Cozy. day of work. You like it? <laughs> we'll have more after your local news and weather. Well done. Wow.